Okay, so today we're going to talk about how to factor, okay? And one of the first things that you've got to always remember to do is to look for a common factor, okay? So you pull out what's common, then you look at what's left and determine if it can be factored. And you look at the number of terms, okay? And if there's two terms, you're going to do the difference of two squares, possibly, okay? If there's three terms, you might try to factor it. Um, if there's four terms, you have to factor by grouping. It's possible, okay? There's always the possibility that it does not factor. Um, so let's look at these first examples, and these we're just going to pull out what's common, okay? Um, so what's common to this first um, problem? A 5, okay? So let's pull the 5 out, and you can, you know, in essence, you're dividing each one of those terms by 5. You don't have to show that step, but if it's helpful, you might want to do that. So if I pull a 5 out, what's left? X minus 5. Okay, that one's real easy. What's common in this next problem? A 3, and what else? A 3 and an X, okay? So, if I pull a 3X out, what does that leave me with? An X and then plus 9, right? Those X's cancel. Okay, what about in the last problem, what's common? A 5, an X, and a Y. Sometimes when there's a lot of stuff going on, I find it a little bit helpful to write that stuff down. You don't have to, but that's definitely an option. Okay, so my 5's cancel, I get rid of one of the x's right so that leaves me with x squared and my y's cancel what's left in the second term uh, five two you divide it's 10 divided by five so it's two okay now in each one of these cases once you factor out what's common you need to look at what's left to see if it can be factored and none of these can be um, but that's definitely something that you need to do all right now let's talk about the difference of two squares when you have two terms, you always check for the difference of two squares. And when you have the difference of two squares, both all of your coefficients are perfect squares. All right, that means you can take the square root of it. So it'd be like 4 or 49, 16, 100, okay, 81. Um, your variable is taken to an even power, and they're subtracted. All right, basically that's what it means to be the difference of two squares. Um, and in this case, that's, that's so. Okay, I've got a 4, a 25, x is taken to the second power, and they're subtracted. When is the difference of two squares? It can be factored into two binomials. And the, bi the, the binomials are the same, the only difference is their sign. So you take the square root and it ends up being 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. 2x plus 5, 2x minus 5. What about the second one? Is it the difference of two squares? Yeah. Yes, what would it factor into? Uh, X plus 10, X minus 10. I always like to put the plus first because the minus is the one that could possibly be factored again. Okay. Um, what about this one? Is this the difference of two squares? Okay, you got a 9 is 16, X is taken to the second power, and they're subtracted. So, what's that going to look like? 3 plus 4X. 3 plus 4X. And 3 minus 4X. Good. Okay, I'm going to make one up here. What if I had x to the fourth minus 16? Is this the difference of two squares? Yes. Now, since this is taken to the fourth power, I don't take the square root of that power. I divide it by 2. Okay? And so this actually factors into x squared plus 4 and x squared minus 4. Okay? But then look at this second one. Can it be factored again? Yes. Yes, it's the difference of two squares. So this actually, you read, write the first part, okay, and then this factors into x plus 2, x minus 2. So that one is factored completely. Okay, now I'm going to talk about trinomials. Now, sometimes in your trinomial, your leading coefficient is a 1, sometimes it is not, like down here, okay? But we're going to first talk about when that leading coefficient is 1. When that leading coefficient is 1, it's a lot easier, okay? When it's not, then it takes a little bit more work. All right, so we've talked about this all year long, okay? We do our product and our sum. And remember, your product is found by multiplying the first and the last coefficients together, okay? So my product here is 6, and then my sum is the coefficient of the middle term, which is 5, okay? So I need two numbers whose product is 6 and whose sum is 5. Multiply together to give me 6, adds together to give me 5. David? 3 and 2. Okay, 3 and 2. You know what, you can't think of it, 
just start listing all the factors of your product, okay? Two and three, one and six, everything, especially when the numbers are bigger. All right, now, when that leading coefficient is one, this is really all the work that I need to do. I can go directly to my binomials, and it's going to be x plus three, x plus two. And you're done. All right, now let's look at the next one. A product and sum. What's my product going to be? Negative 72. And what's my sum going to be? 1. Okay. Now, just a kind of a trick. When your sum is 1, the factors for your product are going to be right next to each other. Okay. They're going to have a difference of 1. So what multiplies together to give me 72? 9 and 8. Okay. But it's got to be a negative 72. So one of those needs to be negative. Which one? The 8. Okay. And so then this factors into x plus 9, x minus 8. Could I put x minus 8, x plus 9? Yes, you could do that. All right. Um, product and sum again. What's my product here? Negative 21. And my sum is? Negative 20. Negative 20. Okay, what are my factors at 21? 21 and 1, 4, 7, and 3, right? But I need them to add together to give me 20, right? Yes? So I'm going to have to use 21 and 1. One of them has to be negative. Which one has to be negative? 1. The 1. Okay? So then this factors into x plus 21, x minus 1. Oh, I believed you, didn't I? <laughs> what should it be? 21. Negative 21 and... Positive one. So x minus 21 and then x plus 1. That'll work, right? Okay. All right. You got to make sure you check it. Okay. So, so that's when you have a trinomial and the leading coefficient is 1. Now, in a minute, we're going to talk about a trinomial when the leading coefficient is something other than 1. But first, I want to talk to you about factoring by grouping. Okay, so factoring by grouping, that means you've got four terms, okay? When you factor by grouping, you group the first two terms together, and you group the last two terms together. Then you look for a common factor. Is there a common factor in that first group? X squared, okay? So I'm going to factor an X squared out, and that leaves me with X minus 2. Then I'm going to look at the second group. Now, if that first term there in the second group is negative, you have to pull a negative out, okay? So what should I pull out of here? A negative 3, okay? And when I pull a negative 3 out, it changes the signs of both of them as well as pull the 3 out. So that ends up being x minus 2. Now, what I have is I have these two terms. And within those two terms, they both have a common factor of what? x minus 2. So I'm going to pull that x minus 2 out, and then what's left is my x squared minus 3. And so that's what goes in my second binomial. Okay, so that's factoring by group. Now, we can apply this to trinomials when the first uh, coefficient is not 1, okay? There's a lot of different ways that this um, can be factored. And I want you to do what you're comfortable with. I'm going to show you how to do it by factoring by grouping. I learned how to guess and check. But that's just it. You've got to check. If you're going to guess, you've got to check. And if it doesn't check out to be right, you've got to, you know, fix it. Um, and then there's the ABC method, and that's a good way to do it as well. Do what you're comfortable with, okay? Um, all right. So, again, I do my product and my sum, okay? Now, remember, when you do your product, you multiply the first and last coefficient together. So what's my product? Negative 24. Okay, and what's my sum going to be? 5. Okay, so what multiplies together to give me negative 24 and adds together to give me 5? A and negative 3. Okay, that multiplies together to give me 24, adds together to give me negative 3. Okay, now, once I get those numbers, I can't just do x plus 8 x minus 3. I can't do that now because of this leading coefficient. So what I do is I go to this middle term and I break it into two terms. Instead of being 5x, it's going to be 8x minus 3x. So it's going to be 6x squared 
plus 8x minus 3x minus 4. And then we're going to factor by grouping. We group the first two together. We group the last two together. What's common in that first group? 2x. Okay, and that leaves me with 3x plus 4. What's common in that second group? A negative 1. Since that thing right there is negative, you've got to pull the negative out. So pull a negative 1 out, which changes the signs of both of those. Okay. Then I've got these two terms, and what's common to both of those terms? 3x plus 4, so I'm going to pull that out, and it leaves me with 2x minus 1. Now, does anybody in here do guessing and checking? Does everybody do it this way, or does somebody do, anybody do guessing and checking? Okay, we'll just leave it like that. All right. Um, now, here's another one. Okay, now I changed both of these from your notes, so um, correct it in your notes. Just write, cross it out and put it underneath. Um, I changed the problem on the second two, so make sure you correct that. I changed them just a little bit. Well, the second one I changed a whole lot. One, what is my product going to be? 10. Ten. Okay, what's my sum going to be? Negative 11. What's going to multiply together to give me 10 and add together to give me negative 11? 10 and 1, that's going to give me a positive 11. Negative 10 and negative 1. Okay, good. All right, so then I come to that middle term and I break it apart into minus 10x, minus 1x, plus 2. Then I'm going to factor by grouping again. Group the first two and the last two together. What's going to come out of that first group? 5x. Okay. And that leaves me with what? x minus 2. What am I going to pull out of that second group? A negative 1. And that's going to change the signs of both of those. That's going to become x minus 2. And then I look at my two terms. What's common to both of those? x minus 2, and that leaves me with 5x minus 1. Okay, try that last one by yourself. Try that last one by yourself, and we'll work it together. Now these numbers are a little bit bigger, so start writing those factors down. Your product should have been a negative 36. Just start writing what things multiply together to give me 36. Maybe sometimes when you see it written down, it becomes a little bit easier to oh, work with. So what was my product? 
Negative 36. What's my sum? Negative 16. So what did you choose? Negative 18 and positive 2. Okay? So, we change this into minus 18x plus 2x minus 12. We group them. Out of the first group, we're going to pull a 3x, which leaves us with x minus 6. Out of the second group, we're going to pull a 2, which leaves me with x minus 6. Okay, and so we look at our two terms, they both have an x minus 6 in common, and a 3x plus 2 left over. Any questions? Okay, you know, when you see this 36 and it's big, start listing those factors. You could have listed 1 and 36, 2 and 18, uh, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. Okay, just start writing them down. And, and, and you'll figure out which one is the right one, okay? But double check it, make sure the signs work. All right. Uh, we have a worksheet, so I will pass that on.